Welcome to another edition of Dodge and Ends. I am Amber Wilson, and joining me on the phone is CBSSports.com college football analyst Dennis Don. So, Dennis, we've got the latest BCS rankings out there, LSU and Oregon right now. They're one and two. Is this the way that things are going to end up? Well, Amber, I think the way the season's gone, I don't think it's going to end up that way. I mean, that's just a guess. You've got LSU, Oregon, Kansas three. I think Kansas is the most intriguing team at this point because all indications are that if they win out, uh, that's a big if, obviously, but at 10-0, and 0, uh, they're that way for the first time since 1899. If they win out, they will be among the top two, uh, assuming Oregon and LSU uh, win out themselves. So I think that's the big news this week in, in the BCS. In this non-traditional team could get A, get this high, and B, play for the national championship. You know, in a sport that's foreign, to a place like Kansas, which uh, you know, the last time they were they were ten and zero was the first season of Kansas basketball, eighteen ninety nine. Oregon has a test a little early this week. Big game on Thursday night against Arizona in the desert. Any chance that the Ducks are distracted by the new number two ranking? Well, Amber, not not really. Not they've had nine days off, ten days off since they last played, and this is a this is a little bit of intrigue here too because of some bad blood between Oregon and Arizona. Uh, Arizona coach Mike Stoops believes that Mike Bellotti kind of poached on a couple of recruits last year that he thought he had. One of them is starting at defensive end for uh, for Oregon. Um, so there's some bad blood. And I, I even hear talk of Bob Stoops getting in the mix and helping Mike kind of game plan or set his defense for Oregon this week. So this is going to be very interesting. Not sold out, amazingly enough, at Arizona. They're playing the number two team in the country with, you know, arguably the top Heisman candidate, Dennis Dixon. Uh, and Arizona itself won a couple of games in a row, so, so the people in the desert aren't buying in just yet. All right, so let's forget about the bad blood. Let's move on to warmer, more loving matchup between Michigan and Ohio State. They go out of Saturday. There's no bad blood here, right, Dennis? No, no, not at all. Uh, first time since 1959 each school has come into this game off a loss, and while it's diminished in national championship implications for Ohio State, the Rose Bowl still is at stake, as it usually is in this game. It's the Big Two and the Little Nine and the Big Ten. Uh, some more uh, side notes. Lloyd Carr, there's been a report this week on a blog, at least, that Lloyd Carr is going to retire after this game sometime next week. And that's been kind of an issue kind of hanging in the background all season. Uh, but it's kind of funny. If they lose to Wisconsin, it, it brews up again that he's going to retire. So we don't know if that's true or not. Uh, certainly speculation seems to uh, to head that way, but this will be a good one. I mean, I, I think I predicted that, that Michigan will win. I, I think because of the revenge factor of the great game, one of the greatest games in the, in the history of the rivalry last year, Ohio State won by three, went to the national championship game. I think Chad Henney and Mike Hart are going to play, at least that's what they say. I think Michigan uh, pulls another upset and win, wins the Big Ten, amazingly enough. Well, the reason why there aren't any national championship implications is mainly because Illinois was able to run all over Ohio State a week ago. But also a couple of calls went the Illini's way in Columbus. An instant replay wasn't able to correct the obvious mistakes. This has been going around a lot lately. I mean, why do we even have instant replay if these mistakes are still so prevalent? Well, Andrew, that's a good question. As of midweek, we still don't have an answer from the Ohio State on why uh, Illinois' second offensive play of the game Saturday wasn't reviewed. Dana Dufresne, a running back, ran 80 yards, was shoved from behind. The ball came loose. The officials ruled it, it, it was fumbled out of bounds. Well, actually, not, you know, not only did he fumble it, he fumbled it into the end zone, and it was recovered by Ohio State. The replays clearly showed. The replay officials didn't stop the game to, to review it. And a similar instance happened at a Pac-10 game where – Vincent Bernard uh, was was either in the end zone for a touchdown uh, or down at the one, but it was still Oregon State's ball, but it was ruled a fumble and Washington recovered and ran it back about 30 yards. We're still waiting to hear from the Pac-10 on that. Why aren't these, you know, we thought the human element was removed from the game or, or most of it when we put in this replay. Now the human element's back in it. If these instant replay officials aren't going to stop the game, what's the good of the process? All right. Thanks as always, Dennis, for all of your college football advice. And we look forward to hearing from you again next week for another edition of Dodds and Ends. But for now, if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. For Dennis Dodd, I am a little